Uh, thank you, everyone. So this session, I don't know if you were um, attending the, the previous one, but this session is going to deep dive uh, into the same kind of topic, uh, but with a different format. So it's going to be a panel, and I have some great, great, uh, great guests with me uh, today. And uh, we, we've seated them in a, in a fairly logical manner, so you can have like a, an easier understanding. So uh, let me introduce maybe on my, on my left first. Uh, you, so you have Jules from Cure. Uh, Jules is, a, is the uh, COO of Cure, and uh, he, he'll tell you about what they do in a minute. But basically, uh, the split we have is like people who've scaled no-code companies using no-code. And on this side here, so you know already Benoit from the previous talk, if you were here. Uh, uh, um, I'm mixing you, right? So we have... B Can you follow? Yeah? <laughs> Just to make sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm confused. Uh, start this way. Don't take it personally. No. Uh, we have Gilles from Cure, and uh, we have Thibaut from GoJob. Get that right, maybe. Oh, good. Right. So these two guys uh, have scaled companies using no-code, and uh, they'll tell you all about what we've, they've implemented uh, at their company, uh, how they're approaching the topic, the learnings. And we have on this side now uh, the two guys who are trying to make their life easier. Uh, Benoit from NC Scale, so the version control, version documenting platform. And uh, we have Philip, uh, right from the US, uh, from Switchboard, and also your other company, No Code Apps. But uh, we'll focus on Switchboard today, uh, which is uh, doing alert monitoring uh, for companies like, like, like them. Um, right. So we have the, the setup, we have the context, we, we, can, we can bring in and I can see it. Uh, so, you know, uh, these guys, and uh, I just wanted to know. You, you haven't maybe all been able to attend the opening ceremony. It was, it was pretty packed. Um, but it was this very interesting figure. Actually, the, the main topic, the main concern uh, for uh, the no-code industry, no-code community at large now is this very topic. So, so it's good that we, we chose it, right? It's apparently the next frontier or the one that these guys are trying to tackle uh, is basically how do, how do we scale with no-code and make sure we have the right processes, governance, uh, security in place. Um, so the question uh, very abruptly now is for your companies when you or for your clients, very honestly, we are just between us, um, do you trust traditional development more than you trust no-code development Today, okay. I'm gonna do. Uh, 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 it, we're gonna play it by hand. Uh, so all those who, tr who trust more uh, traditional development. Uh, I think that the audience is biased. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely biased. Okay. I, I, I wanted to to give the the opportunity to to my guests now to introduce them and give them the time to react on this. Yourself, what do you trust more for your companies, and if you can also just highlight for the audience what you do with no-code specifically at your companies? Because uh, I'm assuming your tech stack doesn't include only no-code stuff, right? So you, you have kind of a hybrid stack uh, now to the, at the scale you've, ra you've reached. So uh, can you tell us what you do with no-code and what's your, your, your position now on this very question? Like, I trust more one or the other or the, the assemblies that I've made. Uh, Gilles, maybe? Yeah, you can start. Yes, sure. So uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yeah, so um, nice to meet you. I'm Jules. Uh, to give you a bit of context maybe about myself and, and Cure, uh, we want to be a, a leader in personalized nutrition, starting with food supplements. So uh, currently our offer is, uh, uh, if you go on our website, you will find a questionnaire uh, that takes for about five minutes. You have about 50 questions, uh, at the end of which we will uh, run our algorithm and, uh, and present you with a, a selection of food supplements, around eight among 50. Uh, and then we deliver to your door uh, a box, a personalized box of food supplements with 30 daily sachet and your, your personalized selec selection in each sachet. We've we've done more than a, like more more than a million people uh, did our questionnaire. Uh, we've delivered more than uh, 200,000 uh, boxes. Uh, but when we started uh, three years ago, uh, we didn't know we would do this all with Bubble because we are heavy users of Bubble. And, uh, and we've really uh, followed what Emmanuel was uh, talking before. Uh, we've uh, 
at each stage of the development, we thought we would leave uh, Bubble. So three years ago, we started Cure, and uh, if you ask me the same question three years ago, I would say I don't trust uh, uh, NoCode, but there is this tool that's called uh, Bubble that may help us today uh, to kickstart the business, and uh, in six months, we will, uh, within six months, we will hire a CTO and replace the tool. Uh, six months later, we successfully launched, and we said, well, it's pretty uh, fast to do updates. Uh, let's uh, keep going, uh, raise money, and then we hire a CTO. Uh, and then we did that. We uh, we raised money. We had a few questions at uh, at that time about uh, what is that you are using. Why don't you have a CTO? How can you do this without a CTO? W what year was that? What what year? This was in 2020, uh, beginning of COVID. Uh, and then thankfully, uh, and, and we also had questions ourselves, and we can talk about that later, but uh, a lot of times there was limitations about performance, about uh, uh, different things. Uh, but thankfully, uh, there was COVID, there was this uh, bubble raised a lot of money, and, uh, and everybody felt safe using bubble. And, uh, and, uh, and today, uh, we have a mixed uh, stack where we uh, outsourced part of, uh, part of the things. Our algorithm, for instance, is not on bubble anymore. Uh, but uh, most of the stack is still on bubble and we feel confident uh, about the future. Uh, we just know the limits uh, today. All right, yeah, thank you. So you, you're betting on, on the code and then you're already at that stage for you. Uh, we already, uh, well, you trust more uh, on par. The yes, because I, but I know the limits, and we can discuss that uh, more in details. But there are there are still some areas, and we touched on it a, b a bit uh, before. There are there are some areas where you need to know uh, what you can do uh, what and what you can't do, uh, and I think that's important. It's and we still learn every day. When there is a new use case, you ask yourself, can I do it uh, today? And a lot of things you will be able to do it in the future, I'm sure. And uh, uh, but uh, today there are some limits uh, for sure. Right. And just just to to get this idea of that scale you've reached, like how many orders, or I don't know what's the best metric for for your business, but how many orders do you process or ship? Or yes, we are uh, close to a, a thousand orders a day. Uh, so okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Thibaut. Maybe yeah. So hi, my name is Thibaut. I'm a head of product and of NoCode at GoodJob. So GoodJob, we uh, we staff jobs basically by connecting. Uh, people who are looking for jobs with companies searching for people. Uh, we have been uh, doing that uh, with digital. So we use digital uh, to scale all the processes. And by digital, I mean we got traditional devs in our team. We got data analysts, data scientists, and no coder. So no, no code is one of the skills uh, that we leverage uh, to build this value. We have been starting no code uh, two years ago. Uh, why? for two main purposes. The first one is to innovate. So we use NoCode as a tool to learn, uh, to learn by doing, by putting on the market a real product. And the second, uh, our second objective with NoCode is to automate some processes. And for that, our stack is mainly uh, made by Make, uh, Notion, uh, and a bit of uh, Airtable as well. So we don't do a lot of bubble because our main concern in NoCode is internal users and, uh, and automation. And so to answer the question, so part of my uh, job is also to be in product. So I start with a need and I need to choose, should I do it with dev or no code? And actually I would say that yes, I trust traditional devs more uh, as I, I trust. I trust no code as as well as I trust uh, devs, but it's a question first about the developer or the no coder who is behind it, um, and second, it's a question of use cases. Some use cases are more uh, with devs, are, are better with devs, and others are quicker with no code. In interesting that you mentioned who who is the one who is you, you were referring to the very person right not like who who has developed this in no code or you referring to a no coder in, in general versus a, a, a traditional developer in general like so specific persons right i'm referring to the specific person as well as that, that's a, that's the process kind of, uh, of the organization uh, behind it okay yeah that's where i wanted to get because yeah hopefully we, we should not depend on like <laughs> one person but but i i see where you're coming from uh, interesting i didn't forget you guys don't worry uh, but i have a, a different one to to so to give you the the opportunity to introduce yourself and exactly specifically uh, what's your angle in this in this field uh, interestingly you you are 
yeah, in the same field, but I have decided to start with a different angle, like a different focus. So the question is is that I have for, for both of you, uh, and we, we'll see what's, how they, they, they react from, from that. But um, what do you think is the main flow today uh, of the no-code stack that your customers, or not no co no, your customers, let's say people like them, right? Uh, so people using no-code for companies that have scale, that have like serious businesses. Uh, what do you think is the main flow? And obviously your answer will be biased, but so the question, if I rephrase it, is more like, why did you decide on your respective uh, angle? Uh, why did you tackle that first? I know you have like ambitious roadmaps both, uh, but, but why did you decide to start with alert monitoring and with uh, the versioning? Uh, so maybe, Philip, you want to get this? Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Philip Lakin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Switchboard and No Code Ops. Uh, we had started No Code Ops first as the first community specifically dedicated to operations professionals in no code because I thought I was the only one for a long time when I found out that no code was a term and saw everyone was a maker and a founder. I was like, oh, it's really cool, but I want to talk about internal tools. <laughs> and so uh, we started the community. It's grown since. And then uh, we built our first uh, product, which is monitoring for uh, Make and Zapier today. So when something goes wrong, we tell the right person, the right team uh, in the right order. Um, it's kind of like pager duty for those tools. Uh, and now we're growing into infrastructure and uh, soon Airtable, so stay tuned. Um, uh, to answer the question, uh, the first one, uh, I definitely trust uh, traditional developers way more. <laughs> uh, Honest yeah. answer. Yeah. That's yeah. first uh, and the reason today, today, and the reason is because it's not necessarily the technology, right? Um, because, in fact, no code today can move way faster in certain areas than ever before. And that's not the problem, is the access to the technology and how easy it is to use. But the traditional development world's been around for so long, whereas this is still so new, that there's best practices, there's infrastructure platforms, there's um, ways of thinking and doing things that we just don't have yet. We don't, we're still developing a language around. Um, because no code's beautiful in that if you want to build something, you can just do it. But not all the time do we, th you know, we often build before we think as no-coders. Um, and that can create its own huge sloth of problems. And so in the development world, there's all these things to protect against those proactively. We don't have those quite yet. And so I still think we're figuring that out. And as we figure that out, uh, I think I'll, I'll trust us just as much. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I think, the f you know, um, why folks, what we focused on, um, look, it, I think there's a danger in uh, when it comes to no code, right? Relying on everything for one platform, uh, especially for companies, right? Uh, because companies want to move really fast, uh, and um, when you're so locked into just one company and you're using them for every single part of the stack, uh, you are now so tied to them that you have to wait on a roadmap for things, and that's like the reason we all got into no code because we were tired of hearing the word roadmap, um, and so. Uh, we believe in like a multi-platform world uh, where people are using multiple platforms to achieve really big, ambitious, technical, lofty goals internally at companies. Uh, in order to do that, uh, you need a level of infrastructure above it. And we started with monitoring because it was the most specific need that we saw that people had. Uh, you know, uh, People would have sales leads form in their sites and not know when the integration went down and they'd lose thousands of dollars a day. Um, and so they really wanted a way to monitor and triage in one place. And so, yeah, that's where we started where we did. Okay, very well. Thank you. Uh, Benoit? Uh, uh, I'm the, the CEO M, uh, and the co-founder of NC Scale. So uh, uh, version control, monitoring, and also a log management uh, tool for, for no code. Uh, it, it was founded one year ago, and uh, we raised uh, $2.6 million uh, in February. And uh, we are now 13. Um, that's, uh, that's for the introduction. And why we choose the version control as our first feature is because uh, um, we saw too many uh, uh, no-code applications with, uh, with uh, technical debt. And we, we thought that uh, the, the technical debt was only for code application. But it is the same for no-code. And so, uh, but as the as no code is is uh, is is really recent, finally, um, 
you don't have so, uh, so many examples about the no code depth in no code, but it is the same than code. And so to, to, to avoid that, we want to apply the same good practices from code to no code. And code uh, was helped by, by GitHub uh, we, we, with the versioning things about that. And uh, to avoid, finally, uh, some, some, technical, some, some technical depth to document what was changed. And, uh, and so we want to do the same thing, but for no code. And uh, that's why it is our first thing. And so uh, how first users uh, was, was, uh, was uh, um, very old no code makers. And uh, it, is, uh, it is a makers that, that did that uh, for four years maybe. And so they, they were at the beginning of the no code uh, industry. And so now they have an app with, uh, with uh, four years. <laughs> and so it is hard to maintain that, to, uh, to update that. And so that, that's why version control, I think it is a good way. And that way it is free also. We want really to share this good practice for everyone uh, in no code to help for to every no coders to use version control to begin their product in no code. Great, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you two are customers of these guys. No. Not yet. Uh, so that's Better when I got some work to do after th that. <laughs> that's perfect because then my next, my follow up question is which one of these two problems do you think is the most pressing within your companies, if at all? If at all? Or do you, did you put in place maybe something uh, because these guys didn't exist before? So maybe you put something in place in the meantime? So we, we, we have these issues, uh, for sure, when I was saying that uh, there are some use cases where we need, uh, we need, we need more uh, scalability, performance, and so on. Uh, I think versioning the logs, uh, alerting is, is important. Uh, I talked to Benoit six months ago, and I was uh, telling him I need his, uh, his tool, and I'm happy he's uh, launching on Monday. Uh, switchboard, I didn't know, but uh, we need alerting uh, for sure as well. And, and, and I think for... For, for Cure, for instance, I, I, I feel, I really feel that we are growing as, f as fast as the no-code capabilities. So if we had started, started the same companies two, two years ago, we would have prob probably switched to pro-code by now. Uh, and we are like, now we, are, we reached a scale where we need uh, a better logging system, where we need versioning because we start to have growing team. And we have these tools that are just coming on the market. And I think uh, these are the, the most pressing uh, needs, uh, versioning, logs, and, and alerts. And, and there are a lot of other needs, I think. Uh, we talked about, some people talked before about uh, AI. Uh, I think uh, just uh, like being able to run a, a complex algorithm uh, with a lot of computing power for instance, today we do it outside of, of our no-code stack. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunities to, to come and fill. And I know that a lot of people here are building uh, companies uh, to, to do additional things as well. And I think there are a lot of opportunities. And for people like uh, us at Cure, we need those tools. We need, the, uh, we need them fast <laughs> to be able to, to, to keep growing uh, on a no-code uh, first environment. Uh, Thibault, anything on this? Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree. Uh, so in terms of versioning, I think we are not uh, big enough to, to, to need it. Uh, we, we are okay with what we have today. Uh, in terms of reliability... Wh what do you have today? Uh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there is no real version. No second honest answer. No, this no, no one has versioning. No, there stack, is no versioning. Stack. <laughs> it's not really... It's documenting the different versions, but you... Uh, anyway, we'll deep dive into the next, uh, you'll see the next topics, but so, sorry. So no, in terms of versioning, um, we got to find the, the right thing between uh, being quick, deliver value quickly, and uh, be uh, to implement some processes uh, for more reliability. So for now, in terms of versioning, we don't have anything. Um, I think when we'll grow, uh, we may need it. Uh, but what for sure in terms of uh, reliability, monitoring, alerting, that's key because that's uh, our core values, which is to build things which are scalable and reliable. And to do that, so uh, your solutions didn't exist. Uh, so we built something quite similar internally, uh, not as powerful as yours, I think. But uh, actually, whenever you, you got an error, uh, you, we log it and we implemented the process. We'll talk about it later uh, to manage all the errors, for instance, and we monitor each and every uh, automation that we got. So that's for sure is one of our main concerns. Great. 
Uh, thanks. That was uh, kind of a long introduction. So now we are deep into the, the topic. And a couple of things we, we want to, to talk uh, now after this. Um, and so, so we've, we've covered a bit like what, what they do, what they feel like this is useful, whether they feel this is uh, useful uh, or not. Uh, so I think, Thibault, we, we can follow up with you because you were about to, to, to tell us more about this, like what you've implemented specifically uh, in terms of processes and, and best practices. So you mentioned you have some sort of like custom-made alerting system. Did you put other things in place? I'm, I'm thinking about like when you're making changes to your scenarios and, and so on, or, or when you're onboarding a new uh, team members. Uh, so w what do you have? Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to check. There was a talk this morning about the quanto way of developing uh, 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 no-code integrations. So for you, wh what did you put in place in your, in your company um, to make sure like this is under control, basically? Yeah, so s starting with the issues uh, that we got with our automations, uh, scalability wa was one of them. So if you don't know how to use Make uh, properly uh, in a technical way, uh, one of the first issues that we got was the scalability way. Uh, quickly, you can go through a number of operations that is not under control. Uh, so this was the first issue, and how we managed uh, to go through scalability. Uh, so was first uh, to get a technical training for our pr product builders, learn how to use API instead of uh, basic integromat make uh, modules, uh, for instance. Learn how to have your no-code modular. Um, uh, all of these trainings uh, are contributing to uh, making no-code scalable. Because the main issues that we got is at some point uh, you were building something and then uh, two, three weeks later with uh, a number of users multiplied by three, it was not usable anymore. So the second one, and after I will let the other talk, was uh, about errors indeed. So uh, in no-code you can get a lot of errors and it can be unmanageable when you are a product builder and you are managing a lot of automations. And to do that, so we built our processes. I was talking about that. But we also switched to a data-driven uh, culture of no-code. So we want all of our product builder to uh, manage to know the usage of their automation. So in each scenario uh, that we build with Make, we add a specific module to monitor how much is it used, not in a technical point of view. So it's not a technical monitoring this time. It's more uh, a business use. So we monitor in a business way how it's used. Because the issue with that was uh, we didn't even know if our automation was used like three weeks later. And we'll talk maybe about it's, it has an impact in terms of change management. So uh, scalability, errors, and uh, be more data driven, I would say. Got it. And how many operations um, a month do you, do you have on Make? I, I guess you're on the enterprise plan mm -hmm. now? <laughs> we are not, uh, because not yet. Okay. we okay. were lucky enough to use Make early, so we so got you a, have a gun flavored plan. A pricing uh, okay. really I interesting, but we got a one one and a half million uh, operations. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. good. A a and Jill, on, on your side, so you mainly on Bubble, right? So, so also like how many people actually put their hands into the the the, the, the Bubble editor for you, and how do you control what's going on? So for us, it's uh, uh, about five people uh, editing the, the, the stack. And, uh, and in terms of best practices, uh, what we've done, so at Cure today, we don't have version control, uh, not, nothing specific around the log management. Uh, alerting is, uh, is, is the main one, actually. And, and we've had also a data-driven approach, because what we've realized is that in most cases, so we still do things very fast, we don't tests, uh, uh, we push what we do I the know, same day, honest, uh, uh. but <laughs> but the one very important thing we've, we've done, and, uh, and that's uh, saving everything, is that we have uh, data consistency checks. Like every 15 minutes for some critical processes, every hour or every day, uh, we have a service that screens all our data looking for inconsistency. And so we will if we make a mistake, usually we realize very fast. Uh, that we push something wrong, uh, and that's our way of doing things uh, today. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, we have a, a complex algorithm for recommendations. Some products should not be recommended together because you should not take them together. Uh, we will 
screen the database and check for those inconsistency. And if so, if we make a mistake, we will know immediately uh, and we can correct it. Uh, so this is just one of examples. I think this is the most important thing we do uh, to prevent all the rest waiting for the other tools to be ready. Got it. For Jules? Or? We use Airflow. Got it. Thanks for the question. Um, cool. So that, that brings me to, to the next question, uh, which is for, for you too. Um, uh, so you see companies like, like GoJob and Cure, um, they look like your ideal customers. Uh, and, and so, so can you, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is like the maturity of the, of the market. And so when you approach customers, I'm, I'm interested in like what type of customers you're approaching and what's their reaction? Like maybe you get approached, um, good for you. But, but otherwise, like what's your ideal market in, in terms of like companies? Uh, and uh, hopefully we have two relevant examples for you today. But uh, and I'm interested in the reaction to, to trying to gauge the, the maturity of the market. Can you, can you comment on this? Uh, sure. Um, so we talked to a variety of companies. Some were built from the beginning, like, you know, like these on no code from day one. Um, we also talked to other companies that uh, team level at like large companies, you know, so 50 or 100 people plus. Um, what we typically hear is uh, someone in marketing or sales or uh, customer experience um, needed something from a dev and the dev said, the R word, right? <laughs> like the roadmap, right? Like roadmap them. Um, and uh, uh, they went to find an off the shelf solution. It didn't exist. So then they found no code and they built it themselves. Um, and uh, what then happened was someone else from another department saw what they did and go, <laughs> you're telling me I can build my own tools how fast? And then it kind of spreads through the organization. And we typically are talking to organizations where it's spread to a team or two or three, um, and they're just trying to get their arms around it because the IT teams that we typically work with at Switchboard, they don't want to stop the people from doing what they want to do. They're not trying to get in the way. They want to, en they want to empower them but they want to know that there's some programmatic best practices being applied um, that they can be involved in if needed. So like at Switchboard, like um, if something fails, we have a thing where, you know, it, if it fails, you know, alert the business stakeholder. But then if they don't respond, send a Slack message or give a phone call automatically to the IT person, right? So um, they really like that, that that's like built in. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like we're, we're mainly working with like, comp you know, like I'd say, maybe 20% so in this kind of category of like they built from scratch and 80% more like medium and larger companies uh, who on the team levels are using these tools uh, for like business critical internal operations. Got it. And the, the, the reaction is like from the IT team, from, for instance, uh, what is it? Varied. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes IT, so we've all heard the term or a lot of sort of term shadow IT, right? Where, you know, IT, you know, where tools are being brought into the ecosystem and IT doesn't know about it, right? And, um, and I think this is like why, uh, you know, like Benoit and I have talked in the past, like why we're both kind of excited about this infrastructure layer is because it has the ability to make both sides really happy, um, where the builders can build as fast as they want, but there's some guardrails programmatically in place where they're not just relying on a CO, you know, center of excellence or a training module, which are all phenomenal and should be done. But, you know, people just want to build at the speed of thought with no code. And when there's programmatic things in place that, you know, uh, I think IT, IT folks are, are more happy. Um, but we talked to a bunch of IT folks all the way from, this is the best thing ever. They're reducing my backlog to uh, I need to rip all this no code out because it broke things that touched certain things that it shouldn't have or it, you know, PII went there when it shouldn't have and I had no idea, right? And like, these are problems that, you know, I think both of us are, are really excited about, you know, sol solving it. Got it. I think, Benoit, you, you, you started with a, a slightly different topic before actually what you're doing now um, and the reaction from people were, so yes, I think you have good stories. I, I think right? that the I think that the best issue, the, the biggest issue in no code is security. It, it is my 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 foot. But in no code industry, I think it is not yet mature to understand that, and be careful with that because eighty percent, maybe more, 
of no-code apps have security issues. So you need to take care about that, and maybe we will talk ab about that after. So it was uh, 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 it was uh, it was our first product, and uh, it was amazing because we we saw so many uh, uh, data flow, and uh, yes, so that's really your passion. So for that, it's really important to uh, to learn about that, and after. Um, we 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 have so many IT teams that don't understand why no coders don't apply the, the same good practices. Why some need to test before deploying and the other not. It's not uh, it's not uh, normal, and that's why we we want to give to the no coders the tools to be able to to uh, to have the same uh, quality of code application. So. Uh, if we, if they can say to uh, to 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 the IT teams that they use uh, that, that they use security tools, that they use uh, log management plus alerting tools, uh, so they can master what is happening right now on uh, all the no-code infrastructure, IT IT teams will be really uh, confident with that. And without that, like today for many tools, it's really hard to uh, to, uh, to to promote no-code internally. Do you still the no code no hack? Do you guys still have that uh, that tool that checks bubble applications yes. for security? Yes. Can you tell everyone the this is amazing? They built like a a landing page where you put in your bubble app, uh, and it shows you all the security like measures all the security on it. What is it? Yes, is that's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No code no hack, and and it is inside uh, uh, it is inside uh, our uh, uh, our new product. And it's amazing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, F thanks Philippe for, for yeah, animating the facilitating the, the panel as well. Um, so so I, I hear you both talking and and I, I have the feeling that what you developing and proposing uh, it it's aiming at the like professional no code makers uh, actually and the, the the people you were describing earlier were more like the the, the business people within the organization. So. Uh, I guess the in the it's again a pretty wide question, but um, your, your, your the people who can use your services they're basically the professional local makers, not not really the one who actually want to develop faster, bypass the roadmap, and so on. Uh, so how do you think this is all going to move? Do we will we have like people like Thibaut in every uh, company, like a uh, head of no code in in the company that will be able to 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 talk with you because you we, we can't. Like it's almost like talking to the the IT people, and in the, the the second part to that question is more like, where do you see this going? Are we just catching up with traditional development methods and, and practices, or or do we have here an opportunity to invent something different? Do you see something different that something that could bring more value here? Uh, I don't know if the question was clear. I think you you yeah, you're I, nodding, I so, you, so probably you. you got I, you got, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Um, Look, just like no, just like no code stands on the shoulders of giants, right? Of code, um, so too are our like the stuff we're doing, right? Like we're all you know inspired by big behemoths in the industry doing infrastructure, right? And we, we don't hide that. Like we are really inspired by them. Now, because we're inspired them by them, we want to take some of the lessons from there. But one thing that I've learned working with thousands of no-coders over the past few years is that if you show a no-coder uh, an application that was clearly built for somebody who codes and like just is a little bit prettier or a little bit more visual, they're immediately turned off, right? Purpose built for visual development is re like UI and UX is just so, so important in, in, in this world of, of visual development that I think we also have a potential to reimagine some of this stuff. I don't think logging has to look the same. I don't think that um, alerts have to look the same. I don't think that your um, uh, what is it, your uh, entity, you know, like diagram, like I don't think those have to look the same, right? Like I think that they get to look a little bit different. It doesn't mean we're not going to learn from it. It doesn't mean that we're not going to um, use some of the same language and some of the same concepts. And uh, but I think we have a big opportunity. Uh, to redefine some of the stuff that makes sense for business users and visual developers, because um, it's just it, it works differently because we are, as no coders, relying on these platforms that we don't have ultimate control over, and so that's that's like a that's like a big thing we have to you know keep in mind. And so um, yeah, I'm, I'm and I'm excited for that. 
I, I'm excited for that. Yeah. And also, I think that uh, we don't have the same uh, first user. Uh, for uh, for us, it is more uh, some developers that want to do no code, and uh, and so they they want to have the same tools, and they are uh, afraid about that. And uh, and so it is really interesting because uh, we are a competitor for one future, but uh, it is not the same uh, things. So it is a proof that, that, that this market is just enormous, and so it is so exciting. So that's why we we, we love to talk together. Oh yeah, <laughs> we nerd out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so but interesting. So you're not talking to the same people within an organization, basically, both of you. Right? Yes, I think that uh, for us, we have a majority of of coders because uh, we 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 have the same words. Uh, for them, but also we talk to no coders, uh, 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 um, um, in, in uh, and so it is. Uh, it, it, it is both, but we are more technical, I think, and uh, and that's why we are more with with with, with a scale uh, with scale up uh, companies and uh, who want to to have something really critical and really stable and reliable uh, for the long term. Got it. So. so that, that leads me to the other side, uh, and uh, many want to ask. So we know a bit about good job, how you're structured, because we have Thibaut with us today, who's head of product and no code. Uh, but, but can you maybe both describe how you organized your teams around no code uh, in a way that ensure uh, like that you take care of, of the topic of uh, practices, security? Like, did you did you design the organization based on that in some ways? Uh, and and who do you would you would you within your organization would talk to these people uh, if they were to approach you after the conference? Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, at Good Job, so no code is part of the tech team. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, all our no coders, they are just like coders. So we need, and I think the the no code market needs to be inspired by devs. Uh, and actually, we got some devs in our company that also uh, that are also making uh, automations in no code, and we learn a lot from them in terms of security, in terms of how you functionalize your, your no code. So I think the the no code market still has a lot to learn from it, uh, but we have to remain to remember why we do no code, and that's why we put actually the no code team within the product team uh, at, at, at GoodJob. So we got the product managers that are basically uh, taking the needs and choosing, should I do it with data analysts, scientists, or no-coders? And the no-coders are called the product builders at no-code, meaning that they are an in-between between a product manager and a tech guys. Why so? Because the product part of their profile is because in no-code, you, you build so quickly that you are the one owning the, the project, you are the one on the field learning uh, uh, the issue, how your product is used, and iterating on this. So we do no, no code because we need to have one single guy or a single team of owners from an end to end. So that's why our product builders are product. Okay. And they oh are the builders. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they are build builders as well because they need to be technical because we need to be inspired by, by, the, by the devs. Got it. And and at your company, Jules. Uh, so how how is this organized? Who do they respond to? Yeah. So for us, uh, it's even more integrated. Uh, I would say. So we, we have the tech team, and we don't have any uh, head of no code, or we don't have any no coder. Yes. Uh, yeah. For instance, uh, no code are the tools we use, like so Bubble, but we also use uh, Zapier, Airtable, and and so on. Uh, it's just part of the options we have when we have a problem uh, next to uh, let's code a function uh, in Python and put it on our Google Cloud platform. It's just another option. And then we have uh, our uh, product owner uh, who is in the room. Uh, we'll uh, handle all the requests and uh, uh, manage what we want to do. And, and, uh, and we allocate uh, based on the skills of the people. But sometimes a software engineer will build a function, but we'll create also the, the interface uh, with Bubble, for instance, to interact with it. And the same person can do it. So it's really part of, uh, of the tools. And we are not yet at a level where we have specialization. Maybe in the future, I, I, I can see a future where we'll have someone dedicated to, uh, to, uh, to a no code, to no code and, and such, such as we can have someone dedicated to mobile, for instance. Uh, but it's just part of the tech team. It's one tool among others. OK, so, so you basically did, did 
two different choices. Uh, so, so that's that's uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, uh, before we 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 take a few questions from the audience, I just wanted to give like one last opportunity to each of our guests here to give maybe one piece of advice or what they want the audience to take away from this. Uh, panel. So, do you have something you want to to say, Benoit? Maybe. Yes, I think that the first thing to to say is that uh, you need to train yourself and not just starting using a tool like uh, anyone. Uh, so, uh, do uh, each uh, crash course. I think that each tool have a crash course, and it is really interesting to learn security, to learn uh, maintainability, to learn how to scale with this tool. And uh, yes, so train yourself, and uh, thank you to be here because so you, you begin to uh, train. You make the first step by coming to this <laughs> talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip, anything? Um, I think what one thing for everyone, regardless of whether you're using no code to found a company or using it internally for operations, I don't think it's ever too early to start documenting. Um, and the reason is because you know most people hold off documentation because either. It's a pain in the ass, right? It's gonna, it's gonna change again anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna yeah. change again anyway, right? Um, but what people don't realize is that, like, with things like Loom, right, you, you don't have to write everything down. You can just record things, right? It's not necessarily, or with like Tango, right? You can just click through things. Like, you don't have to move so slowly with documentation as you used to. And like, um, and the other reason I like starting early with documentation is because by explaining it, you rethink about it. And if you can rethink about it, then you can educate others on it. Um, and sometimes, like when I'm in the middle of documenting stuff, I'm like, oh God, that was structured terribly. <laughs> we are we are rethink that completely. So um, I just think, you know, even if it's just a voice note, even if it's just a loom, like start documenting as soon as possible uh, your future self team uh and yeah well thank you well thank you very actionable advices thank you and, and for, for you i guess it's more based on your experience maybe what you would have done differently and yeah basically do you one message you want to give to the audience i don't know yeah my advice if you use no code for automation uh my advice would be to to focus on data to so to be trained on data because no code is about data. If you want to make your no code scalable, you can. Uh, you need to know how to get data, how to push data. If you need to manage all your errors in your scenario, it's only about questions about data, uh, about how it enters, how you manage the data if it's in the wrong format. So, so be trained on SQL, regex, all the parts a bit technical about the no code. If you if you're willing to do some automation. All right, and the final word for, for Gilles, maybe? Yes, maybe. Well, uh, what I would say is that uh, it's, uh, with uh, no-code tools, you have opportunities to do things that you could not do if you are not a dev, for instance. Uh, but what I always say is that once when doing this, keep, keep things simple. Because those tools enable you to, to do exactly what you need it doesn't, and and sometimes you 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 have this. Uh, you think that wow, you are empowered, so you can do everything again. We build another Airbnb. They always talk about that. I think uh, you can build Airbnb with uh, with Bubble, but I think most of the time you realize that it's why well, it's very powerful. It's when you just do simply a simple thing that you need specifically for your needs, and, and, and then you make it very modular. I like uh, what they say at Finn. You make it modular. You have all these simple things that you use and that you can reuse, and and that's how it's powerful. Thank you. That's that's all very concrete uh, advices, uh, I, I think. Uh, so uh, hopefully the audience will, will also enjoy that. Uh, thanks a lot. You'll be able to grab all these people uh, during the party tonight if you want to ask them more questions. Uh, maybe we can take a couple of them. I'm checking at the at the, the guy behind the up there. Uh, so uh, what you have to know is the session automatically cuts uh, a few minutes after it's supposed to. So we, we can only take a few. But yeah, maybe. Turn it on. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for the panel. So I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you actually approach hiring when it comes to looking for people with no-code skills? So do you actually explicitly look for uh, no-code developers or whatever, or a product manager with no-code competences or or developers? <laughs> yeah. We tried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, what, did, what did you try? All of them? Or no, we tried to look for uh, experts in automations, uh, but uh, it's uh, not easy to, to find some experts. So, 
we we actually looked for people from uh, Le Wagon or any, any other place like that where you don't know how to code, but what you do know is the basics of uh, tech um, mindset. And then we got um, an auto-evaluation tool uh, that we built internally at GoJob. You can find it online. Uh, where it's, it's shared to everyone? It's yeah. open source? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can evaluate on three main skills, uh, the, the product part. So we are not looking for product managers, but we are looking for open-minded builders. So th the product part. The maker part, we are looking for people who do know how to use the tools that we are using, but it's not mandatory because we, we know how to train them. And the last part, as I said, is about data. Uh, and uh, uh, do you know how to do uh, an HTTP call? Do you know how to use API? Do you know uh, how to do a regex, SQL? Uh, it, nothing is mandatory, but we are looking for the right mindset. And if the, the guy is tech or the girl is, is tech, uh, it's better for us. I, w I will put a shameless plug on that front. Uh, on the No Code Ops newsletter uh, every week, so no, uh, we post talent that are looking for jobs. So like vetted like No Code professionals who are looking to work at their next company. That, so the companies like apply to them. So uh, if you're looking to hire talent, uh, definitely check it out. And. And also, sorry, I think that uh, one one question that that you can ask uh, to a new uh, 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 a new applicant is to ask him for his last uh, documentation of his no code app. Mm. Killer question. Yeah, <laughs> and it is really simple. And, and get it immediately. Don't let <laughs> don't let them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if uh, he, he did that, is great. And maybe he can do that after. But I think it is a good way to to understand how he explain what he did in no code. So it is one one thing to uh, to uh, to uh, to ask. Uh, yeah. So uh, one uh, question to Benoit regarding the the security uh, features of uh, no code applications. Uh, so I just checked the the no code no no hacks. It seems very interesting. But I was wondering what what is. Um, uh, this uh, service checking exactly is it the visibility of of the the pages because uh, uh, is it a technical vulnerability since uh, then it's a, a zero day for no. for bubble no no uh, no it yeah. is only about uh, checking all the uh, the uh, the uh, bad practices in security uh, so how they use bubble because bubble is secure and no code is secure mm -hmm. but the people who build on no code. Don't use th that uh, uh, in in a good way to secure the app. So it is only what we did. So we only check if they use the good practices in their no-code application. And so for Bubble, for example, because it is only the, the one tool that you, that we check today, yeah. we are, we are scanning all the the, the, uh, the pages of, uh, of the app, and we are looking for email, for token, for secrets, anything that that, that we ah, can find. Okay. And in Bubble, we have many many. Uh, place where you can uh, make mistakes in <laughs> API connector, in 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 in, in option sets, in uh, in we, with the privacy rules. Uh, it is one of the biggest issue. Uh, so many many things in Bubble. So that's why it is hard okay. to learn that to learn security because one year ago, no, n not a lot of people were aware, aware about uh, security issue with Bubble, and mm -hmm. it was really a small uh, small community of security. And today, uh, we during our launch about that, I hope that we uh, we um, we aware uh, all the, the the trainers about security because many trainers didn't know uh, some some security issue with with uh, with, with the bell. So it was very massive one year ago, and I think now it is still the case. Kay. So we need uh, to work a lot for that. Uh, yeah, because uh, just for uh, for example, for access management, you need to know, to know the business how it's working. You cannot do it uh, on an automated way. Uh, I think that's uh, what, what I was wondering. Yeah. So uh, no contact is, is only scanning uh, if we Content see some pages. email or token oh, okay. Okay. Uh, in uh, in the app. Very and clear. after, for sure, we can do that. But if we see some email and token, for sure, we see some business data. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. And. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Like I said, you can you can find them in the alleys you know, or tonight at the party you are all staying. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot.